Hello and welcome to part 9 of the Johnny Blender 4000 series. This is David Ward and when last I left you we had just started uh, working on the rig for our little robot character. Now, uh, before we go any further, um, I did jump ahead and, and play with the rig to, to make sure I was going to get the pistons and everything working and I came upon a problem that we're going to run into. So I'll show you that. And that's where when the arm bends, the piston doesn't have enough clearance to not intersect with the forearm. So what we need to do is go back into our model and adjust the location of that on the elbow and probably on the knee as well uh, so that we don't get this intersection here. So um, I can show you the fix that I came up with and that's just to essentially move the whole piston and and the the holders for it up or back further back and then further down onto the forearm so now if we grab the forearm and bend it you can see that it it doesn't intersect right there also edited the arm a little bit so it's angled further down rather than more of a straight angle there so so anyways um we'll get it so let's go back into uh where we were and We'll go ahead and jump into the top view and grab our model. Let me turn on display. Um, and go ahead and tab into edit mode. And I, what I showed you before was kind of just a rough get it to work. So I got it to work. Now let's do the same thing, but we'll make it a little prettier. So let's grab our whole piston set up here and the ends. We'll leave the bases still attached to the forearm and upper arm, but we'll just grab those. So. Just grab those and move those out, maybe about like so. Okay, and now let's come back in here and maybe fancy, fancy it up, pretty it up a little bit. Let's go to our wireframe view so we can see things a little bit better. Just added a couple of loops on, hopefully, both sides. Yes, okay. Now we'll grab both of those loops, go back to top view, and just kind of round that out like it's, it's bent like that on purpose. Okay, we'll do the same thing on this guy. Um, let's actually move the rod of the piston in a little bit. Actually, let me select one of the vertices on the rod itself and then we'll select this, okay? Then we'll just move it down because his arm is pretty, pretty straight and it's not gonna straighten much further. So we don't need to have a lot of extra elbow room, haha, <laughs> as it were, uh, here on the elbow, ha. <laughs> Yay, puns. Um, okay, so maybe that will work. Uh, we'll we'll play with it once we start rigging, and then we'll tweak it as needed. But uh, for now, let's uh, go ahead and add a few loops right in here. About like so. Okay, maybe scale those down on the z-axis so it's a little skinnier. And let's uh, turn on our proportional editing, and we're going to round this out. Again, so it's more purposeful looking like we oops move that change our fall off down to where it doesn't affect the pivot point up there okay so that looks a little better and another thing we can do to maybe make it a little prettier is we can move the whole thing here and deselect that, and let's deselect those. Just go ahead and move that further down the uh, the upper arm there. So maybe about right there. And we'll straighten that back up. I can get rid of a couple of these loops just so it's a smoother line. So we'll just get rid of that edge loop and maybe this one. There we go. Okay, now back to top view. Grab that guy and move it up. Okay. So, there we go. I think that'll work. Now let's make sure everything's lined up this way. Looks like it is not. We need to fix... Um, let's grab the rod there. Control L. And we'll go ahead and hide that for now. And we'll grab these guys. And kind of do like we did on the on the upper arm when we were working on it before. 
because I like to have the only these selected but once I unhide the others it's also going to be selected so I'm going to go ahead and create a vertex group just real quick and we'll call this and eh, just leave it group doesn't matter I'm going to delete it as soon as we're done so now I'll alt, uh, go ahead and assign those to that okay alt H unhide that now we'll hit A to deselect everything and select well did I not assign it assign now oops alt H okay and select there we go alright now let's move this to where it actually fits over the rod okay now we also need to make sure that when this rotates it's going to rotate correctly and the angle is going to be correct so um, select both of those and then there okay so let's rotate that to where hmm damn. you know what we might just have to wait till we get that rigged to be able to really tell if it's uh, the right angle or not and one more thing before we say we're done with that let's move this in just a bit and these guys as well and where's on the other side these guys and there okay so we'll make that a little smaller move that in just so we have that much more clearance uh, there on the elbow and also one thing I noticed when I was playing with it we need to give it a little more clearance to bend a little further because right now as it stands it can only bend about 75 degrees so he can't like he can't reach up to scratch his nose <laughs> or something like that if he needed to so let's give him a little more wait for it elbow room okay so maybe about right there okay so now we need to do the same thing on the knees unfortunately so grab everything here and let's put our 3D cursor right there and then we'll rotate around that so that we can do like so and then we'll grab this move it out and maybe add a loop right there and move it up okay so maybe that'll work hopefully he doesn't have to sit under <laughs> a table or something where his knees poke out too far uh, and we'll probably need to do the same thing back here let's move those down we ever yeah let's make sure we had our proportional editing turned on so we'll just scale that up just a bit so we get more draw there okay so hopefully that'll work let's go ahead and save and uh, like I said, if we need to adjust it, we can always go back in there as we're working on the rig. Now, speaking of the rig, go to pose mode so we can kind of get an idea. One thing I have I was playing with, uh, again, on the fix thing, just testing out the the, um, the, uh, the piston things. Um, usually, control comma, so I'm rotating that. Um, usually when I build a rig, as you know, I like to do the inverse kinematics on the on the arms and everything. So I'll tell you what, let me save this and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let me open up that fix. There we go. Okay, now normally I I use the inverse kinematics. So let's, I think I have it turned off right now. Yes, let's turn it back on, turn this one off. Okay, so yeah, it and it, it, it looks good because it's easy to animate this way. Um, however, our our uh, our pistons don't want to work quite as well. I mean, it look it's working. You can get a better view over here where there's no rig. You see it working there, but I have limits set up on the bone there right here. So if I turn off IK, you can see them in action to where if I rotate this way, it's going to stop right there because that's where it would meet its, its given space. And then if I try to rotate it the other way, it's going to stop right there. I have limits set on there, limit rotation on the x-axis. And I can also cannot rotate it on any axis other than the x-axis. 
because I have those locked uh, minimum and a maximum of 0% on the Y and Z. But the X can go back 10 degrees or forward 50 degrees. So I think I've mentioned 75 degrees earlier. It's even less than that. Or it's about 60 degrees, I guess. But uh, anyways, so we have those limits set up just so we don't accidentally animate and intersect into the model. Now, if the inverse kinematics is turned on, you can see that it doesn't care about those limits. It just overrides them. So, in this particular setup, we're not going to be using inverse kinematics. But what we can use that's very similar to inverse kinematics is going to be automatic, um, if I can find it here, <laughs> turn that, go just go and delete that, um, auto IK. So we're not using the inverse kinematic targets and things of that nature, but as long as we have auto IK turned on, it kind of acts the same way. So if we grab the hand, we can just move it down, and since that auto is turned on, it kind of acts just like inverse kinematics. And the positive thing is if you move it too far, like so, it automatically pops it back to, to meet the limit. So if we come down here, it's like, well, you know, the pistons are going through the arm or whatever right here, like so, you can see it, boom. You let go, pops it back to the limit. So that'll be a lot easier to animate more efficiently and more visually correct. So anyways, we're going to get that set up. So enough jibber jabber. <laughs> Let's go back to where we were. Now to get the, to get the, uh, the, the pistons working the way we want, we're going to have to add a few more bones in here. So let's tab into edit mode and I'm going to put my 3D cursor right there. And actually, you know what? It doesn't really even need to be. I was going to add a bone here as I did in the fix, but you know, it's, it's just a, it doesn't even need to be there. It's, it's really use, uh, superfluous uh, to use a big word. Um, so what we need to do though, is we need to add a bone, two bones actually right here, one as a target for the, uh, the cylinder here to point at, and then one for the rod to be on. And then on the other end, we'll have a target for the cylinder or the rod to point to, and then we'll have the cylinder itself on its own bone. So if that makes sense, I'll, I'll explain as we go. So. Let's make sure our 3D cursor is right there in the middle where it needs to go. So go to our side view here. We can see it is not as very far down there. So let's put it right there in the middle. Right there. Okay. Now we'll go Shift A and add a bone. And let's grab this first one. We're going to call it, uh, I'm going to use some acronyms here or uh, initials. E for elbow. Um, and it's going to be the target of the cylinder. So we'll go E, or we could even spell it out, I guess. Elbow cylinder target dot L because it's on the left side of the body. Now, uh, let's grab the end of that, drag it down, and make sure we parent it to the upper arm. So hold down shift and hit control P. And we, we want to just keep the offset. Don't, don't connect it. Okay, so now, um, we're going to add another bone, Shift A, and we'll go ahead and name it before we go any further. Grab it. There we go. Do, 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 do. Bone. Okay. Instead of bone, we're going to name this one uh, elbow uh, rod. Oops. Elbow rod. Dot L. Now the reason I'm putting elbow in front of it is because, of course, we're also going to have the rod and cylinder for the knees. So we got to make sure we specify that it is for the elbow. And then, obviously, when we get to the knee, we will specify for the knee. Okay, so now, in order to get this lined up on that cylinder pretty pretty properly, pretty close to the way it needs to be, I'm going to go ahead and put my 3D cursor right there at this end now. So about right there. Okay, then we'll go to our top view and make sure we line it up right there. Now, I'm going to grab the end of that bone and go Shift-S. Selection to cursor, and it's going to snap it right down there. Okay, so this is the one for the rod. So let's Alt Control S and make it a lot skinnier so that it fits on the rod right there. Okay, and now I'm going to Shift D to duplicate it, 
and I'm going to rename this elbow cylinder dot L. And now we're going to control alt S and make it a little fatter so we can differentiate the two visually. And now I'm going to hit W and go switch direction. And so now it's base is right here instead of down here. Okay, so now we have our 3D cursor right where it needs to go already. So we'll shift A one more time. And this one is named elbow cylinder target. So let me hover over that and hit control C. Every time I open and close Blender or, 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 or a file, it doesn't keep the screencast keys going. So I apologize for that. So anyways, uh, just hover your mouse over this name here. Hit control C. And then we'll grab this one and just hover your over mouse over this bone and hit control V and it automatically copy and paste. So instead of cylinder target, this one's going to be rod target. Okay, so elbow rod target dot L. We'll go ahead and grab the end of that and drag it down too. Now, here's where we need to start cleaning it up visually a little better. Actually, tell you what, let me alt or control Z and we'll go to a side view and drag that down so it's more more correct there okay now what I was saying make it a little cleaner let's go into our wireframe view hit Z and we're gonna grab the end of the rod bone see what you're grabbing right here so let's click again there it is elbow rod L. and I want to move it to where it's more visually correct according to the actual model so let's move it on let's see which axis would it be I don't know. Just uh, move it in until it matches up with the end. It's going to try to do it perfectly along whatever axis, but uh, couldn't find it. Anyways, so now we'll do the same thing on the cylinder. Actually, make it a little fatter, actually. There we go. And we'll grab this end of it. Cylinder.l. There we go. And drag it down until it's about right there. So we'll tab out of edit mode, maybe a little further. About right there. And there we go. So now we have the more equally visually correct. Now, we need to rotate them to where they match up with the hinges there. So, we'll grab both of those, tab into edit mode, control R, and rotate them. Actually, since they're going opposite directions, uh, we'll just need to do it one at a time. And let's rotate it until it's even, ah, it's correctly lined up with that hinge. There we go. Now we'll grab this one. The same thing. About like so. Okay. Okay. Now, make sure that the elbow rod target and the elbow cylinder are parented to the forearm. So tab back in edit mode, control P, keep the offset, and then also make sure that the rod is parented to the upper arm as well. Control P, keep the offset. Okay. So now, if we go into edit our pose mode, if we rotate that, you can see that those are following along. And now, what we need to do is set up our uh, our constraints to to where uh, they perform visually correctly. So the way we do that is we'll go ahead and start with the rod here, and I'm going to come over here to the uh, bone constraints and add a new one. And there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can do you can do use you can do it using inverse kinematic targets, or you can go ahead and just use uh, uh, track two constraints. So we'll just use track twos, and we're going to use the meta rig. And I'll tell you what, let me go ahead and re rename that JB four K underscore rig. There we go. Just so it's more visually uh, appealing. Okay, and the bone we're going to target is the elbow rod target. There we go. And make sure it's, um, I don't know if this matters or not, actually. We'll put local space on both, and I guess it needs to be world space. There we go. Okay, so just leave it world space. Now, uh, do the same thing on the on the cylinder. Track 2, JB4 rig. And this one's going to be the cylinder target. So there we go. And everything else is good. So now, when we rotate the forearm, you can see... Obviously, the model is not behaving because we haven't applied it to the armature yet. But you can see that it looks as though this is a piston working because it's going in and out of that. The, the little one's going in and, out, in and out of the big one. So there we go. And 
the twist is not twisting, so that's good. Sometimes it, if you when you set up target constraints and, and things like that, it, it tends to twist and do things uh, uh, that are un, non desirable. So uh, it appears to be working. So now um, let's go ahead and copy these bones down to the knees. Save us some work. So Shift D, duplicate those, and all we'll have to do is rename them to be knee instead of elbow, and then they probably all have a dot zero zero one after them. So we'll make sure we need to change that as well. So let's rotate this. Go ahead and bring it over here. Go to our side view. Rotate. And uh. Oh yeah, when I uh, created the elbow, remember I moved that upper arm uh, in and then closed the piston a little further. So that's the reason this is not uh, lining up just right. So we'll get this done there. And then we'll go ahead and grab the model itself and do just that. Get the uh, everything situated a little better. So let me grab the whole rod. And then we'll grab the top of it. And we'll just drag it down until it's centered there in that box, which is where the pivot will be. So about right there. Okay. And then we'll round this out a little bit more prettily. Okay. So there we go. All right. Now let's get it lined up in this direction as well. So tab into edit mode. And... Go ahead and grab this, and actually, tell you what, we'll just grab everything and just rotate it because it's got a very slight angle to it, as you can see. Okay, so now we'll need to adjust the rotation of the bones again. There we go, and zoom in here a little bit so we can see it better. There we go. And there we go. Okay. So go ahead and rename them all. This is going to be knee cylinder target dot L, uh, dot L. There we go. And then knee rod. Oops. There we go. And then let's rotate here. Knee cylinder. And finally, knee rod target. There we go. Okay, so make sure everything's renamed as it should be. Yes. Okay, so now, uh, well, I guess we have to make sure we parent them. Parent those two to the thigh. Keep the offset. Parent these two to the shin. Keep, oops the offset okay so now let's rotate the the shin and make sure it's gonna work okay it looks like it will might need to go in like we did on the elbow and move our surface here in a little further so we have more <laughs> more knee room instead of elbow room this time okay so Trying to think if there's any uh, anything else we need to do specially for the rig. Seems like I had something in mind for the uh, the rubber parts. Yes. Tell you what, let me pause recording and and play with that a little bit so I can. I had it in my brain last night before I was going to sleep, <laughs> and I need to recall it to memory. So I'll be right back. Okay, I, I remembered what I was going to going to do. I was going to try to create another bone in here to where the uh, the hand could rotate, like it could f wave up and down or or back and forth. But if it spun around, I was going to try to make it to where the rubber did not follow it. But uh, that would be, I think, a more complicated rig than than I uh, <laughs> I am able to just come up with off the top of my head. So. Uh, for now, we'll just treat it like uh, like a piece of you know like it's all connected. So it, if you rotate you know around, the rubber will follow. So, anyways, 
That being said, I think um, the rig is pretty well done. Let's uh, do a few things before we copy it over to the other side. And that's, I would like to turn the inherit rotation off of the head and off of the chest. And one thing I want to do, although, let's see. Turn that on. Usually, like I said, when I create the inverse kinematics for the hands and feet, you can sit there and, and uh, rotate the hips around and the everything else will stay put. So that might become a problem. We might need to go ahead and set up the inverse kinematics just for that purpose. And then we can turn them on and off uh, when we need to. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Um, I'm going to grab this bone here. I'm going to tab into edit mode. I'm going to move that up to where it's even with the ankle bone. Right there. All right. A little bit more. There we go. Go to our front view. Zoom in. Move it over. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and do the old... Uh, if I can remember, <laughs> remember how off the top of my head. Um, we're going to have the shin bone... Uh, inverse kinematically targeted to this heel bone. So select that first, shift select that, and shift I to active bone. There we go. Make sure we give it a chain length of two. So now when I move this, everything moves. But the problem is uh, <laughs> it's got a dependency loop. So as you can see, everything's crazy. So what I need to do is we need to attach this bone to the foot bone. Actually, the foot bone needs to go the opposite way. So when you rotate it, it rotates around the toe instead of the heel. So we're going to W, switch direction. There we go. And now this one, the heel bone will be attached to the foot bone. Control P, keep the offset. And now the toe bone and the foot bone will be attached to the the main heel bone. So we'll go Control B, keep the offset. So now when we tab out and we rotate the foot bone, if I grab that and uh, turn the transform back to normal, if I rotate that, you can see, well, what is it doing that for? Tell you what, let me pause recording and figure out why that dependency loop is still there. So stand by. Okay, figured out why the dependency loop was still doing that. That is because our our shin bone is inverse kinematically pointing at our heel O2, but the heel O2 is still connected to the foot. Or well, that's not. <laughs> I thought I had it figured out. This. Oh, that's the. Yeah, I was on the right track, but. Uh, uh, Wrong, wrong train car, I guess. <laughs> uh, the the whole foot needs to be separated completely from the shin. So right now, the the main foot controller that controls the foot controller in the toe and the heel is still connected to the shin, thus the uh, dependency loop. So, bink, hit that X right there, separate that out. So now, when you move the foot, boom, follows along. So we rotate the heel. There we go. Can balance on his toes, and then he can tap his toes without worrying about the foot. So, okay, if all that made sense at all. So now, um, if he bounces around, his his feet and legs stay the same. So, hopefully, we can get the uh, the knee pistons to work with our inverse kinematic legs. So, anyways, we got that all set. Let's go ahead and, okay, clear out the motion there. There we go. Now, wow, running on 30 minutes. Apologize for that, but we're almost done. We're going to go ahead and select the left side here, all of it, and the leg. Put our 3D cursor right in the middle, right directly in the middle, as close as you can get it. Put it right there on that blue line. We're going to hit the period button, so we're rotating around it. Shift D to duplicate all those bones. SX negative 1, so we're scaling on the X axis, negative 100%. And we'll go ahead and, cl and uh, just click to lock it in. Then we'll go armature, flip names, and everything that had dot zero zero, 
whatever it was, like hand.l.001, it changed to hand.r. So it's automatic. Now, you can notice that they're all rotated strangely, and we don't want that. So we're going to select the inverse, and then make sure X, this, what I was talking about earlier in part 8, was this is when we need x-axis mirror turned on. So we'll go ahead and click that, turn it on, and now when we hit Control r to rotate the bones, we're not actually going to rotate them, but as soon as we hit it, boom, it locks the other bones into rotating the exact same, or the mirror of that. So even though we're not rotating them at all right now, it prepares them to be rotated exactly the same. So now we just go ahead and click it in, and boom, everything is rotated as it should be. So now we can select, say, the hand bone, for example, and if we move it down, I guess we'll have to turn on auto. I turned that off earlier when I was figuring out what was going on with the legs. Make sure that's turned on, and we'll drag the arm down like so. And then if we hit the copy pose right here, and then the paste opposite right there. Oh, well, good thing this happened. <laughs> you might be confused. I uh, slipped my mind just now, but uh, when you're posing with auto IK, it poses each bone. Whereas when you're posing with inverse kinematics, like so, the only thing we moved was the heel bone, but everything else moved with it. But if we copied that to the other leg, everything would move with that too. So let me clear that out. But when you're using just the regular kinematics, the automatic inverse kinematics, uh, it, it basically moves each bone into that position. So if we wanted to copy this exact pose, to this other arm, we'd have to select each bone in that chain. And now we'll hit copy and paste opposite. There you go. So, um, that's going to be it for part nine. Let's go ahead and clear everything out. And once we get into part 10, we'll start uh, adding the mesh to the rig and making sure that all of these special constraints and everything work as they should. So, it's going to be all for part nine. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in part 10.